great, 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 you are great, 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 you are great, greatly to be praised, you are great, oh, you are. adversity. Do not be dismayed at the face of challenges. Even in the world they say challenges are the breakfast of champions. How about you that is more than a conqueror? Praise God. Even the world considers challenges as their breakfast. So whenever challenges come, you say, oh wow, breakfast is served. Let us devour it. How about you that is more than a conqueror? The victory is already won before you began to fight. The capacity with which you are fighting is not yours, but the one that was given to you freely from the Father. So be strong in the Lord 
and in the power of his might trust in the power of God's might not in the power of your connection not in the power of what your hands can achieve or what your parents can give you but in the power of his might God's might and you know we said God is not the mightiest God he is not in comparison with any God or any man in terms of might. God is the Almighty. Everything that has might drew the might from God. And that is why the Bible says as a child of God, for you to be strong, it is not education that makes you strong. It is not money that makes you strong money is a defense wisdom is a defense these things are good but it comes to a time when the law says you shall hold your peace and i will fight for you this is for those who have drawn strength from the power of his might the power of his might not those whose defense is just their money you see why some politicians will brag and say, let's see in court. They know they lost. They even came to make their statement. They say, I know that many of you did not vote for me. <laughs> so how did you now emerge? You are the first. It means many voted for you. But you know. So he boldly said, I know that many of you did not vote for me. And still say, let us see in court. Because their money is their defense. But we will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Is someone hearing me this morning? Be strong. Be strong. Most times when it looks as if favor have been declared over you, goodness and mercy, it looks as if those are the times when things seem to be very terrible. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? It looks as if that these, those are the times where things will just go as if you, you, you take 10 steps backward. But be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. These are the things the Bible said, great and effectual doors have been opened before me. But there are many adversaries. The adversaries. The adversary cannot close the door. But the adversary's job is to distract you from making use of the door. Or entering through the door. Or assessing the door. That's the job of the adversary. He will cause a whole lot of things to happen on your way to enter through the door. It's just like you see that day you gave your life to Christ, you became a heavenly candidate. It's all here what I'm saying. You are you are heaven based, but you see you are still here the, on the journey. Satan will do a lot of things that so many times you think of dropping out, you think of going back, you think of doing a lot of things. That is not in line with the day you gave your life to Christ. Praise God. Therefore, this morning, this is our month of God's goodness and mercy. God's goodness and mercy. And we established in prior times that goodness and mercy is not something that is going to come. Goodness and mercy is already within you. Goodness and mercy, we have come to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. Goodness and mercy. Now, that throne is not in heaven again. That throne is not somewhere that we need to attain. That throne is already in you. The Bible says, for the kingdom of God is within you. God's kingdom cannot be within you and his throne is somewhere else. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Nigeria is in Nigeria. The president of Nigeria is in Nigeria. The seat of power is in Nigeria. Is in Asorok, which is the seat of power. That place is still in Nigeria. So the throne of God, God's kingdom cannot be within you. And his throne is somewhere else. So that throne is within you. It's within you. And that's why we establish and say, reach in and get it. God is not going to bless you. God has blessed you. God is not going to bless you. God has blessed you. He said he has blessed us with all heavenly blessings. 
he has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness there is nothing external that is going to happen for you it is only the things you pull out from the kingdom that is within you that you enjoy it's only the things you pull out and therefore you must look within you and begin to pull out things and therefore if you will pull out things you must understand that first success when not properly defined you 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 begin to chase some shadows unless you properly define success the tendency to chase shadows is imminent when you don't properly define the things you need to pull out from you you expect less from yourself that is why you see the order of the day is mediocrity everybody is mediocre you see people that are underperforming and people are celebrating their underperformance people are hitting below the belt and they are being celebrated because even the people that are celebrating them have not even thought of they don't even know where the belt is not to talk of hitting it praise god so therefore sometimes the achievement people celebrate you for are actually your average life because they rank lower than the quality and quantity of deposits you carry on the inside sometimes the people around you you see I, I was talking to some people i say you see some people they are in one school they are scoring first position they now go to another school and start scoring 30 30th position from first in one school in the place where they are where everybody is a dundee they are the best now you see even in that school we had the person now moved the first position there now goes for a mass competition is open his mouth like this and you're looking i saw some of these competitions children you know children do you know they you know they do for children i mean you see some children x squared raised to power plus minus two uh, play uh, uh, dy dx x minus two plus five uh, even university students can't answer it <laughs> They did what the boy said jesus after failing like five questions he said jesus but you still see a lot of people getting you are wondering even me that uh, I'm, I'm very good at math i can't i've not even i've not even finished writing down the question not to talk of solving it not to talk of arriving at the answer so you see sometimes you are judging and celebrating yourself because of the average people that you have surrounded yourself with you don't judge yourself based on the people that are celebrating you thank god for them oh thank you for celebrating me i appreciate you but this is not my end you have to expect and demand more from yourself because you don't know what god has deposited in you until you keep trying you keep trying you keep trying maybe them are their one talent some of them have not even used their one talent you you are a five talent man and you don't even know and you are there playing around just like the story of the eagle that was kept with chickens the eaglet that was kept with chickens he started eating with chickens and started eating with chickens and was playing around with them the highest the chickens can do is they'll fly like this and they'll play around they'll jump around before you knew it, the eagle that can fly high and soar above mountains is now playing around with chickens and it was as if there was no difference between the eagle and the chicken because as if there was no difference the more you dine with average people the more you, you will not even be average you will be lower than average be lower than average the kingdom of God is within you but you must learn how to pull out every deposit praise God don't surround yourself with average people you emulate you watch great people where you are going going to the people you surround yourself with tells of your future it tells of your future i'm not here to motivate you it's not a motivational speech i'm giving you it tells greatly of your future my wife told me said i like the kind of quality relation ministerial relationship you are making i don't i don't i don't i don't flock around with average people who their goal is, is just to buy a car and and feel good and live and live good and feed their children and die Praise God. You can't measure success merely by the nice things you've acquired. 
things like you have a certificate things like you've bought a good car things like you are living in a good house things like you have built a house you don't measure success like that that's not how to measure success because if you have built one house you can you can build a hostel you can build an estate if you have built one estate you can build 20 estates you can house people you can give people free accommodation there is still more to you there's still more the kingdom of god bible said jesus told them he said in my father's house there are many mansions there are no one mansion it's all here what i'm saying there are many mansions and we are supposed to be ambassadors of the kingdom we are supposed to be carrying the mindset of where we are coming from there are many mansions it's not one it's not one praise god so it cannot be defined correctly by the nice things you've acquired neither can you measure it by the applause of others you say oh among my peers i'm the best 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 okay outside your peers are you the best <laughs> outside your peers are you the best the thing you are doing can we call you to compete in in a in a calabar municipal if, if it is if it is outside dominion chapel calabana can you compete if all that people that are doing the same thing in calabar we, are, we don't want to talk about cross river state praise god so it doesn't happen because others are applauding you wow excellent performance that's good thank god for you but can you compete on a national level can you compete on a national level can you be placed on platforms where others have, st have stood and you and you do well you do well praise god success is correctly measured by the extent to which you have responded to the weight measure and depth of potential god has put in you that is how you define success it's not defined by what you have just achieved thank god okay you know there are people that they, they call them i get them before because anything you stop improving on is already decaying is already fading out is already dying it's already going anything that is not growing is already going it's all here what i'm saying so you must measure success based on the extent that you have responded to the weight the measure, the depth of potential God has put in you. And how do you know it? By keep laying demand on yourself. 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 Never you come to a point where you say, okay, I beg, let me just leave everything. Let me focus and settle this one thing first. It doesn't happen like that. I'm telling you. It doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen like that. I've, I've lived small enough to know that things doesn't change like that praise god so we may celebrate you for writing some books or doing one or two things but you know you can do more you know you can do more you know you can do more people may celebrate you they are allowed to celebrate you but you always know that there is more to you there is more to you if you don't see it and know it you can't produce it it's only the more the things you demand from yourself that you can produce you can produce praise god so therefore stop at nothing refuse to be distracted by the praises of people keep pushing until you birth every glorious thing god has put in you keep pushing there is greatness in you there is greatness in you it's not by answering great because there are a lot of people that their name is joy, but there is no joy around them. It's all here, know what I'm saying? So many happiness have died of depression. Rich kids are, are becoming poor. It's all here, know what I'm saying? It's not by answering great. It's not by answering great. It's by demanding greatness from yourself. And you see, for you to be able to successfully do this, you must learn how to consistently engage in prayers and fasting. You must learn how to consistently engage 
in prayers and fasting we saw in the scriptures bible said that what man knows the spirit of the things that are in the spirit of a man save the one save the spirit of god it is only god that can be able to reveal yourself to you it's only god that can be able to reveal yourself to you the more you wait on god the more you pray the more you fast the more your face your countenance is altered if you read luke chapter 9 verse 29 luke 9 verse 29 he said and as he prayed as jesus prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance he said follow me and i will make you there is a man you need to become to be able to fulfill the things god has put in you there is somebody you need to become Peter, you are a great man. You are very industrious. You are doing very well. He said, but there is another man you need to become. He said, follow me. Follow me. And one of the teachings he gave them, he said, can't you pray an hour? Because anytime you pray, he said, the fashion of your countenance is altered. It's altered. Now listen to me. Fasting makes it difficult for the environment to influence you. And prayers makes it easy for you to influence your environment. Did you get that? Fasting makes it difficult for the environment to influence you. Because you discover that every time you fast, you are dealing with your appetite. You are training your body not to satisfy your appetite. Am I talking to somebody? Because everything that, de that destroys a man is his appetite. Everything. Everything. You see somebody's thing that doesn't belong to you. You want to steal it. You go and collect it. They catch you. Your life is gone. You see a lady that is not your wife. You begin to, dry, you begin to desire lust. Before you know it, you fall into sin. Some people, that's how they, they will end their life. They will marry unwantedly. A lot of things begin to happen in their life. The same for a young lady. You see this guy, biceps and triceps. Your appetite is the thing. Bible said, no man is taken over by a temptation except by their own lust. It's only appetite that draws you towards sin. That draws you towards anything that will destroy you. And Satan knows this. Satan knows this. Satan cannot destroy a man. He uses his appetite to destroy him. And you see what fasting does, it begins to train your senses to, to know how to say no. I've been fasting for how many days now? 60 something days. Most of the time, my wife will bring food in the morning. I say, woman of God, get thee behind me. It's all here, what I'm saying. I say, get thee behind me. Because it trains your senses to know how to say no to the things you want to the things you love things you love so it's not just about uh, it's not just about uh, staying hungry so that uh, so that god will do something for you no fasting is actually training you it's actually training you so that one day satan will bring up something and you the same way you have learned how to say no to dog's food you can learn how to say no to anything he brings before you is someone hear what i'm saying is somebody in church so fasting makes it difficult for the environment to influence you and prayers makes it easy for you to influence your environment because prayers is you building power with god building power with god power is the ability to cause change power is the ability to effect change so when you have built power through prayers, you can be able to make things happen around you. You can be able to cause changes around you. That's what prayers does. And therefore, if you want to begin to throw the path of success and pull out the things God has deposited in you, you must learn how to fast and pray. Jesus was to be tempted by the devil. 
The Bible says he was taken to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. But by the time he got there, he started praying and fasting. <laughs> so Satan was waiting for him to finish the fast. He didn't go there to fast and pray. The Bible says he was taken to the wilderness to be fasted, to be tempted of the devil. But by the time he got there, he started fasting and praying for 40 days. And he was done and Satan arrived. Arrived. And but by the time Satan was coming, he was already equipped with wisdom, with knowledge, with power to be able to overcome the devil. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? So this morning, it is important for you to know that the reason some people can never gain access to the deep things of God is because they have not winned the trust of God. They have not winned the trust of God. That's why this morning I'll be speaking to you. Somebody will say, so, sir, what have you been doing since? I've been introducing the topic. <laughs> we want to start the teaching now. Amen. Amen. This morning, we want to speak on God's interest in a man. God's interest in a man. What is the thing that God is interested in to see in a man? And that special interest that we want to look at this morning is what we call trust, trust, trust. God's interest in a man is to trust the man. God wants to trust the man he wants to invest himself in. God does not like waste. God does not like to waste things, waste resources, waste investment. So if he must invest himself in you, if goodness and mercy surely must follow you and live with you and be with you all the days of your life then you must be able to win god's trust psalms 23 verse 6. psalms 23 verse 6. the bible says surely goodness and mercy that means assuredly no matter the circumstance is all here what i'm saying this scripture says no matter the circumstance no matter what happens surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever are you with me are you with me now before this scripture was written have you read the preceding scriptures have you read from verse 1 Let's read from verse 1. Psalms 23 from verse 1. He said, The one that notwithstanding the situation that goodness and mercy shall follow is the one that the Lord is his shepherd. <laughs> is someone with me? He said, The Lord is my shepherd. Before you run to surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Is the Lord your shepherd? The shepherd is the one that leads you. That guides you. That tells you what to do and what not to do. There are two things there that if I start breaking them down, will not go. Number one is the Lord. And number two is the shepherd. Already you know the Lord is the unquestionable one. Am I talking to somebody? The Lord is the unquestionable one. You can't question what he's doing. You can't question his instructions. That's the Lord. But he said, this Lord is now my shepherd. He's the one guiding me. And because he's my shepherd, I am not bothered about the things I want. That is why Jesus told them, he said, take no thought. The things you eat, nor where, or where you put your head. He said, take no thought. He said, that means anytime you start thinking about you, you, you wake up in the day, your worry is what are we going to, what am I going to eat today? I don't have food. I, ha I don't have this. He said, you, the Lord is no longer your shepherd. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Jesus was trying to interpret this scripture. 
that David understood over 2,000 years before Jesus came. He was trying to interpret it to them. He said, take no thought what you shall eat, nor what you shall wear, nor where you put your head. He said, why? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. So many people are sheep, but they are the shepherd. You are the sheep and the shepherd of your life. You are the sheep and the shepherd of everything you do. You take no instructions from no one. The Lord is my shepherd. And you see, if the Lord is your shepherd, one of the things he does is to humble you. He said, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He maketh me to lie down. It's not he made me to lie down. Anytime he sees pride in you, he flocks you. He said, come on, lie down, lie down, lie down. Am I talking to somebody? Anytime your head is up, he knows that it will destroy you. So he will not allow you. Jesus came and told them. He said, you want multiplication? He told the apostle, he said, make the men sit. He, he wasn't interested in the women. He knows that the men are the people that carry pride in on their head. Because once the men can sit, the, the women, the women, the women, in fact, were already sitting. Even before the instruction came. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why you see, count now, you see that we have more ladies here now than men. Where are the men? Where are the men? The men are supposed to be the one praying. In most homes, it's the women that wake the man up to pray. In most homes. I've gone to verse 2. You are still in verse 1. What is happening? <laughs> he said, the Lord, the shepherd... He maketh me to lie down. Tell your neighbor, say, lie down. Lie down. Some of you, the reason why you are in trouble is because you are too erect. You are too erect. You are too erect. The Bible says, Saul, when the devil will come upon him, he will throw the dog, the, the, whatever he will throw, despair. And David will take a bow, take a bow, and, and hide for himself. He would have said, ah, I am the anointed one. Why, why are you throwing that? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord will protect me. No weapon. From the, you start quoting scripture. When you are supposed to lie down. That's what some believers do. They start quoting scripture. When they are supposed to lie down. He said, he make me. He made me. He, is, he makes me. He, he will keep making me. It's a continual process. If the Lord is your shepherd... He has the job and duty jurisdiction to always make you lie down. Make you lie down. The day the Lord can make you lie down, He's no longer your Lord. He's no longer. So, so that you know that be my Lord and Savior is not just a declaration. It's a declaration. It's people in church. Am I, am I talking to somebody? The way you guys are just looking at me as if I'm just uh, entertaining you. How is my entertainment? Is it right, man? He is my Lord and Savior. It's not just a declaration. The day you declared it, that day the declaration begins. Because the first thing he will do is to make you lie down. Make you lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. You are too erect. Direct. and you see how does he succeed in doing this is lie down in green pastures green pastures talks of good food the sheep eats pastures so so it means that you are expo he exposes you to good word some of you don't know what you are enjoying being in dominion chapel no when you go to some churches in calabasa you will enjoy you understand Like a general overseer that came here and for 35 minutes kept us standing and was shouting. Hey, hey. Oh, he, said, he said everybody will get visa, including pastor. So if all of us get visa, we'll close. <laughs> we'll close church and go abroad. Why are we going abroad? To show that God is powerful. That God is a working God, we miracle working God. And I pitied his members. I had pity on his members. I had pity. 
You see, that's what they enjoyed over there. And they have been doing it. You will get visa. You will get visa. You will get visa. Shout amen. Amen. Shout amen. Amen. They, they are shouting. They are shouting. From here to here. He said, the Lord will make you to lie down in green pastures. In green pastures. He said, Peter, feed my lamb. Feed my flock. Feed my sheep. He keeps feeding you. He keeps feeding you. He keeps feeding you. That's when you are being well fed and there is affliction along the way. You can be able to pull out from the world, you know. He said, goodness and mercy shall follow me. It doesn't matter the affliction. It doesn't matter the affliction. Because you've been well fed. You've been well fed. He said, he leadeth me beside the still waters. The still waters. We said that the waters is a representative of the word and the spirit. Of the word and the spirit. You can't be a child of God if you don't effectively walk by the still waters. The still waters. Always know how to engage the spirit. Always know how to engage the spirit. Always. 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 Walking in the spirit. Walking in the spirit. And in verse 3, he said, He restored my soul. He restored my soul. There are times you'll be overwhelmed. He said, When afflictions, when things are, are beyond me that I cannot, he said, Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock. And why will he lead you to that? So that he will restore your soul. You find peace. In his peace you find peace in his peace he restored my soul he restored my soul that when satan is is looking as if you are losing it how does he restore your soul he lead you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake the lord makes sure that you walk in the path of righteousness he said there is a way that seemed right unto a man a sinner does not have the capacity to live right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A sinner sins because he enjoys to sin. A child of God, if he falls into sin, the Bible says, if he sins, hear me, O children. I, I think that should be first John, first John 1, 2 or so. Either first John or second John. First John 2, verse 1. He said, my little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. That you sin not. He leads me in the back because he knows that sin has a detrimental effect on every man. Every man. On every man. But because you are a child of God, he said, and if and it's not when it's, it's not when any man sin. He said, if. That's why he said, if anyone is overtaken by a fault, let the brothers come together and encourage him and pray for him and strengthen him. He said, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. For his name's sake. Why? He is the judge and the advocate. He's the one judging the matter and he's the one advocating for the matter. Some people are not in church. He is the one that is advocating the matter and he's the one that is also judging the matter. So he comes out of himself and said, are you guilty or not guilty? The lawyer said, he's not guilty. He now comes back and says, you are not guilty. <laughs> Are you guilty or not guilty? The Lord demands that if you are guilty, I will sentence you to death. And he comes out of himself and says, says the sins that he committed has already been paid for. Look at the blood. Look at the evidence. Look at the evidence of the payment. He's no longer found guilty. And he comes and declares you. He says, now you are justified. Your sins, I remember no more. I remember no more. He leads me on the path of righteousness, not for my sake, but for his name's sake. For his name's sake. For the sacrifice he has put on ground. It cannot be a waste. That 
that is why he told us he said and i give unto them eternal life he said and they shall never perish he said i like the last part he said neither shall any man somebody said no man can pluck me out of god's hand no man he said it's for his name's sake the reason why he's leading me it looks as if i've missed my way he still finds me he still finds me and leads me he still finds me and leads. it's because no man can be able to block any man that god has chosen out of his hand satan will try the enemies will try your friend even your flesh will try we will try every attempt is to pluck you out of god's hand he said but this life i have given to you no man can be able to pluck you out of my hand no man but you see he said no man it is only you that can block yourself even if you are weak present your bodies is someone hearing what i'm saying he, he, even if you don't understand what is happening to you say carry yourself and come the, the woman with, with that they casted out seven demons the bible said she was a prostitute she, when everybody was observing protocol observing protocol she broke the protocol and came before jesus and, and lay down on his feet and was crying say because my sins which are many are forgiven i am filthy but i can't leave you lord i can't leave you i can't leave you Don't block yourself out a useless girl you are trying to correct and monitor his brother's attitude but he will say she said she said all these church church things we just ban you people from going to church I'm going to church I, I i almost gave her the slap of her life so you, so you are threatening us that you 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 ban your brothers from going to church but we should we should start shivering shivering and shaking so we should start shivering and shaking because you don't know what i know you don't know the covenant that is that is that has garrisoned our life you don't know the benefit of being called a child of god you don't know that every time we come here we renew covenant the covenant of preservation the covenant of salvation you don't know you don't know you see he leads me in the path of righteousness the good thing is not because of me but it's for his name's sake for his name's sake say that no man can be able to pluck them out of my hand no man somebody say i'm safe and secured in his hands hallelujah he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake aliva kana and because i'm in his hands he said in verse 4 in verse 4 he said yea ah there are times it is assured that yea he said yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i walk through times when people cannot understand they ask me where is my god though yes it's true i am walking through the valleys of the shadows of death the times i am in even people cannot comprehend a young man called me very close brother of mine because they know some one or two informations about my business and whatever it is and he said that he saw a vision that god will lift me from where i have fallen to i ended the call <laughs> say where have i fallen to <laughs> it was one of the most mischievous and amusing call of the century he said god he saw a vision yeah god will lift me from where i've fallen to i said where i've fallen to is your breakthrough if you if you attend where i am now and the truth remains that i didn't fall anywhere though i walk through the valleys of the shadows of death he said i will fear no evil this man is a man that have lied down in green pastures this man is a man that 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 walks in the spirit leadeth me in the paths of righteousness 
this is the man that will not fear evil in the face of death he said why for thou art with me the kingdom of god is within you it doesn't come upon you so you you are not afraid oh, are you sure the lord is with me now are you sure they, they, i need to invite the lord just like samson prayed and say god just show me mercy let your spirit come upon me one more time the spirit is not going to come upon you one more time the spirit is within you for don't you know that your bodies is the temple of the most high He said, for thou art with me. Thou art with me. He said, thy rod and thy staff. Thy rod is, as I am walking, I remember that some of my friends are doing well. I want to go and join them. He's rock. Move, move, move forward, move forward, move forward. Move forward. Keep moving. Keep moving. I remember I'd be like, I'm wasting time. All my friends are not driving Jeep. He said, Come on, move, 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 move. Thy rod. He says, Spare the rod and spoil the child. God does not spare the rod over the children he loves. The greatest measurement of love is correction. That's the greatest. A friend that sees you smoke, woman, I sleep around and yells you is your greatest enemy. It's the worst enemy of your life. I have seen friends who have good friends, but they don't know what to go. He say all these things you are doing. He right? said, "My friend, why you disturbing? You should be. 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 You should be." But some of them that have sense, as they say it, they, they will have a rethink. But other people will surround themselves with foolish people. You say, ah, why, why, why will he talk to you like that? Why, why will he do like that? Does he have any... No. He said, thy rod and thy staff, the staff of authority. That there are certain things when your strength will fail. The Lord, ah, God, he said, Satan, give way. That's my child. You didn't hear me. He said, give way. That's my child. And even in the affliction of Job, God told Satan, he said, yeah, whatever you are doing, don't touch his soul. <laughs> he said, be out. Don't vex me. He said, whatever you are doing, don't touch his soul. They never knew that God was setting Satan up. Am I talking to somebody? God set Satan up to bless Job. Because he said, if the thief is caught, he will restore sevenfold of all that he has stolen. And he sent Satan to go and steal. So Satan was already caught before he stole. Satan already was caught before he stole. Because God was trying to find a reason to bless Job the more. And he was walking through the valley of the shadow of death. He was walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I always smile at the face of challenges because I see a lot of unwise people around. That's when they mock. That's when they despise. But they didn't know that God was setting me up for something they can't comprehend. Something they can't comprehend. He said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. They, he corrects me and he still speaks for me. It comforts me. It looks as if he hates me, but he's still defending me. He's comforting me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5. Jaleke nefelikura hasha. He said, You have prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
You know, when you walk through the valley of shadow of death, even your parents will despise you. Some of them will become your enemy. <laughs> Some of them will say it is finished for him. There's nothing, is a is a is over for you. You have a lot of enemies. Rich people have a lot of friends, even their enemies are their friends. No, see now as 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 you don't like Tinubu, but Tinubu, Tinubu, Tinubu. But you still have a lot of friends. <laughs> you still have a lot of friends. But you don't have money. Ah, those days when I didn't have money, it was as if I was irritating. I, I was irritating. I, I, I irritate some people. One guy looked at me. One fine young man that we had in church that he looked at me and said, Ah, you, you two were war. Why, why did you war like this? <laughs> Everything about me used to irritate them. <laughs> See, you, you war. Why are you ugly like this? As we went to work, he looked at me, Ah, are you too fine? He looked at Felicity and said, Ah, are you too fine? I said, so How is an ugly father giving birth to fine children? <laughs> He said, you prepare a table. He, he prepared a table before me in the presence of those that called me Wawa. You saw here what I'm saying? When I was in school, those, some of those girls, big girls are now. Yeah, I no send you, but you are free to talk with your mouth. Some of them are coming for counseling in my DM. Coming for prayers in my DM. Because that's, that's how the Lord does these things he said whatever you do don't forget the place of the anointing thou anointest my head with oil which makes my cup to run over thou anointest my head with oil my cup runs over the anointing is the certification for running over for overflow the anointing when the anointing is lacking in your life a lot of things will go wrong a lot of things will go wrong thou anointest my head with oil he said my cup runneth over and verse 6 6 he now said when these things are in place when the Lord is your shepherd when the Lord is your shepherd, when he makes you to lie down in green pastures to be well fed of the world, when he leads you beside the still waters that you consistently walk in the Spirit, when he restores your soul, leading you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, he said, even when you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, don't lose the consciousness that he, the Lord, is with you. Don't lose the consciousness. He said, it is this man that surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of his life. All the days of his life. But don't forget the last part. <laughs> he said, what brought all this goodness and mercy is the Lord is your shepherd and he said where I am there shall my servant be also I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever you see the scriptures interpreted it pari pasu surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life is directly proportional to I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever so the day you stop dwelling in the house of the Lord because you see not dwelling in the house of the lord you are no longer on that green pastures are you with me you will lose touch of his righteousness you will lose touch of his spirit you can't be speaking in tongues and the spirit will lead you to a beer it will lead you back to the, his house am i talking to somebody you will lose touch of his righteousness you will lose touch of his word you will lose touch of his spirit you will lose touch of everything you lose touch so so is that is colon 
is an interpretation of the other one. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It can be interpreted as if I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Are you blessed to me? Nice to be